All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Jennifer Lamaster with the University of South Dakota Beacom School of Business, and I'm going to be the moderator for today's session. Um, I wanted to welcome you all to the webinar, which is Building Your Brand During the COVID-19 Crisis. We are happy that you can join us, and we really hope that this new webinar series will help you during this time. Um, just a few announcements before I kick it over to Emily and we get started today. Um, all participants have been muted for the duration of the webinar. Um, at the end, I'll be able to unmute your lines if you'd like to ask a question. You can also use the chat feature throughout the, this, uh, throughout the presentation. If a question comes up, just type it into the chat bar and we will um, have a nice Q&A session at the end. Um, if you have any other needs, um, technical issues, or anything along those lines, um, just use the chat feature. Um, throughout the presentation, and I'll do my best to help you out. Um, and just a reminder, we have several more webinars scheduled on a number of topics. Um, I'll throw the URL into the chat bar. Um, it's usd.edu slash business slash COVID-19. Um, but uh, in addition to upcoming webinars, you'll also find recordings of our past webinars that we've been hosting over the last few weeks and a recorded version of this webinar will be up there in the next day or two. So with all of that, I am really excited to welcome Emily Quinn. Emily Quinn is a marketing instructor at the Beacom School of Business, where she teaches a variety of marketing and business courses. She joined the Beacom faculty in 2018 after spending 20 years in different industries, ranging from IT and healthcare to wine and craft beer. Emily's students love how she brings real life experiences into the classroom make the business practices come to life. Thank you, Emily, for joining us today. And I'll turn it over for you now. All right, great. Well, I see some familiar names and faces out there uh, in the virtual world. And so I'm so excited that all of you took some time uh, to uh, fill your uh, buckets um, as we are all navigating this, this crazy crisis. So uh, let's begin. Let's see here. Um, hi, I'm Emily Quinn, and I'm here because I love to talk about brand and marketing. I'm passionate about it, uh, and I get energized um, by it. The bigger the problem, um, the bigger uh, amount of energy I bring um, to the table when we are talking about how to facilitate communication and branding your business. So I teach a variety of classes, um, uh, like Jen said, everything from digital marketing, um, marketing, kind 101. Uh, I did a brand management class this past semester, which I really enjoyed. And so I'm really passionate about how all of those three things intersect. And at the moment, we're seeing that intersection uh, happen more and more. So um, I am uh, here today, let's see, to focus on one particular topic, building your brand. So this is a time of unknown, and it seems like every 24 hours we're either learning something that's completely scary or actually, you know, finding something that has a little bit of hope to it um, for businesses today. So I don't want to negate the fact that bank accounts are drained, um, stress is high, uh, not sure how to make payroll, um, navigating government um, websites, etc. I don't want to negate that fact. It's, um, uh, however, the work that I'm proposing that we focus on today is important work, um, but it's surely not the only solution uh, during this pandemic. So, let's see here. So this is my family. Uh, my husband owns a construction and home remodeling business, Quinn Home Improvement forgive the pun, uh, or the, the uh, peg, I guess, uh, to promote him a little bit. But we have spent many late hours uh, together, Joe, you know, at the dining room table figuring out, all right, how am I going to have a, a construction business in the middle of, of this crisis? Um, so I know the stress uh, that can happen from owning a family business, and I know firsthand what a struggle it can be. So right now, sorry. Um, we are all looking for the fish, right? We are all looking for those customers and we're frightened that they will never come back to us. 
but I hope to offer some hope that brand building and specifically brand building in the whole scheme of what marketing is will ensure that no fish or customer slips through the net when the markets are open again. So building a strong brand ensures that our nets, our, business, our businesses are ready to go when the customer is ready to swim again. And we're seeing them swim in different ways, right? So um, delivery services and streaming services and um, convenience, you know, those type of businesses are thriving in that type of environment. So how can we meet our customers where they are? So we don't have a lot of time today. Usually I'm used to um, you know, hours and hours during the week, um, 16 weeks of a brand management class. Um, but this is what I really want you to focus on and walk away with today. So uh, brand is important and necessary work for businesses to be successful. Brand is an art and a science. And so for those of you that are a little bit um, uh, more analytical, uh, this is going to sometimes feel conflicting. And that's where we get into that beautiful space of art and science, which is maybe one of the reasons why I love brand uh, and talking about brand so much is I, I love that uncomfortable space of it, it makes sense, it doesn't, and, and that kind of balance between the two. And then uh, number three, communicating your brand starts at the top of the organizational chart uh, and and communicating that from a leadership perspective of how important it is really does start at the top so hopefully if you aren't at the top of um, of the org chart for your particular business um, you are able to communicate the importance of why brand building is very important um, to that leadership okay so sorry um, Starting with why, it's a business standard concept um, done by uh, Simon Sinek. If you haven't uh, listened to that uh, video from many, many years ago or read that book or listened to maybe one of his podcasts or a synopsis of that book, I think that's really important for us to focus on. And even if you think you know your why or you've done this work you know, five or six years ago, uh, take some time, put, you know, pull out a, a post-it and actually articulate what your why why is why are you in business because that really is that center point of that brand and allows us to understand uh, and, and communicate to the customer so uh, of course in the video it talks about Apple and um, you know Apple builds these beautiful machines that helps you facilitate your business that much more they don't just make computers so starting with why is a really important concept so um, some homework for you to do uh, after after this um, uh, this webinar. Um, so uh, let's see here. Sorry. Uh, there we go. Um, so a, a little bit of hope as well. And that's uh, also what I'm hoping to infuse throughout this presentation is hope for you as a, a family business is this comes from uh, Kevin Lane Keller, who is really sort of the brand guru from the academic world. And so I'm quoting from his textbook, 40 years of evidence from past recessions suggests that firms willing to capitalize on a marketing opportunity by investing during a recession have on average improved their fortunes compared with firms that chose to cut back. So what I am proposing with this marketing investment that you make during that time is investing in your brand and doing the brand work. So when you are communicating out to all of your customers, that brand is intact and your message is clear and to the point. So we sort of have to work um, you know, in parallel tracks. You probably already have marketing out in the marketplace that is running. Um, perhaps you increase that and then you take that step back and you really hone in on your brand and hopefully today I'm able to give you uh, the ramen noodle way of building a brand, okay? So instant, um, but still delicious. So uh, uh, let's see. What is a brand? We um, obviously brand is a, a, a buzzword that's used in marketing. Um, it's uh, somewhat hard to define, but really when you hone in on what a brand is, many different descriptions, many different uh, vocabulary terms uh, that, that, that identify what it is. But for me, 
It's communicating how you are treating your customers. It's that promise of how they are actually going to be treated by your business. And so what is that promise that you're communicating to them? Them. That comes back to that why statement. Why are you in business? What are you doing? It's more than sales. Obviously, if there's one thing that we have learned during this pandemic, it is more than sales. It has to be something more for that customer to actually want to engage with your business. So if marketing is big, it's bold, it makes you look you are distracted by it, you are intrigued by it. That's what uh, marketing to me is. When we think about brand, I'm so sorry, having a little um, Google issue here. When we think about brand, brand is these quiet moments. It's where you're looking at that mountain and you are awestruck. Brand evokes, brand emotes, and brand promises that there's something more. So see that subtle little difference where we have that marketing message, where when we do the brand work, we're really going inside. All right, so it makes you look uh, with marketing and here we're looking more internally. Why my slideshow is not cooperating here, but so, when we think about that and we have those kind of differences, we can get into the space where we're really focusing on how to think about this. So there are so many different components to think about. And if you know this textbook that is all full of what brand is and how to do the brand and what it is and all of these chapters, I have honed it in on these three components. So um, uh, this is almost kind of a bullion cube of what you should focus on. So brand elements, brand positioning, and brand architecture. So first, let's take brand elements. The logos, the fonts, the colors, the imagery. What do all these elements say about your company? Looking at your business card, the feel of the paper, uh, looking at the letterhead, how your website comes across, what do these elements say about your company? When we see that Nike swoosh on a particular shoe or shirt or you know shorts, whatever it is, we can feel that athleticism really coming through. And it's almost as though we can feel our body moving faster and stronger. When we see that Apple logo with the bite out of it, you know, we can just feel that crisp, clean keyboard, um, the way our productivity increases, the way our presentations look that much better than our colleagues, we can, we can feel that. So that is what brands are, that verb to be able to communicate what you are. So brands are verbs, Nike exhorts, IBM solves, Sony dreams your business name and a verb. So this will help hone in on those brand elements that you have, everything from colors and color palette and logos and fonts, et cetera. This is brand elements. So how do we differ from our, comp our, um, our competition? So this is brand positioning. Where is your business in the position of your customer's brain, right? Where does it, um, uh, where is it on the scale of one to 10 versus your uh, competitor? Okay, so how do you differ from your competition? How are you the same? In the customer's minds, they're coming up with points of parity, they're coming up with points of differentiation, and then they're making that decision at the end of the algorithm to be able to make the conversion or not. So how you position yourself against your competition, what makes you choose, uh, what makes your business a choice over another, this is brand positioning. And there's lots of different academic ways, there's um, uh, templates to follow, et cetera, et cetera. But what I'm proposing today, you know, is some post-it post notes, a nice pen and maybe a highlighter and uh, you can really figure out what these are for your business. So this is brand positioning.
All right. So now we're going to talk about brand architecture. The foundation of your brand is really built on the mission and the vision and the values. So what are these? Write these out. Are there anything, you know, is there anything that needs to be adjusted so that your brand architecture matches up to how you're doing business? Just like when you create that organizational chart and you roll it out and you know there's clapping because everyone's like all right great now i know my roles and responsibilities now i know who i who to report to if you're sitting in that leadership uh chair you're like okay i know who's got what right i feel comfortable with that that sort of clarity that a good organizational chart um can bring a company a good brand architecture can do the same thing so it communicates to their to the to the customers how to best use your company. What job are they hiring for you to do for them? It simplifies that learning, and when we simplify learning for customers, we speed up the decision making and we speed up conversions. All right. So this is brand architecture. So just you know, saying these are the different brands, um, this is how we communicate it to the uh, consumer, that can be very clarifying. So we've got brand elements, brand positioning, brand architecture, these kind of three main tenets of, of what brand is. And you might be saying, oh my gosh, Emily, this is so much work. Well, we're gonna dig into a little bit of a, 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 a bigger task here by step one, doing that brand audit. Okay, so a brand audit can be very, very clarifying. Um, and the good news is you can start small and uh, start identifying what work has already been done. So many of you have already communicated or written down your mission, vision, values, your recent marketing campaigns, your website, web reviews, maybe your employee handbook, and you get to, you know, have a wall wherever that is and start printing out those um, you know most successful social media posts most unsuccessful social media posts putting this all together like some CV, CBS you know murder mystery show um, and if you know you want to have the little um, uh, yarn from you know one particular graphic to another you can you can get as as crazy as you want to but starting to look at all of this is really important because that is what the consumer is seeing and we don't want to offer any confusion. So this is a, um, a wonderful step in order to continue to build your brand. Now I wanna pause here again and remind you that I am not proposing necessarily how to increase sales tomorrow. This is work that does take time, but it's also necessary work. And especially if we are going to be in this crisis for several weeks in the future, how we communicate is going to become really, really important. And that's what this brand audit um, can offer us. All right, so it's also important to know who you are marketing to. And this is where customer personas come in. I have all of my marketing classes um, do a customer persona, a user persona, sometimes what they're called, but really we're rolling up what our ideal customer is. And we're saying, this is what they look like. All right, this is Drew. Um, you know, he has um, uh, some pain points in his life. He has some motivations. Uh, this is how, you know, he uses events. I think this is for an event marketing firm of some sort. Um, this is what he looks like. This is what kind of clothes he wears, his glasses. It's that personification of a, our target market. Now, what's really important, especially now, is how is the COVID-19 crisis affecting drew all right so where is drew is drew um you know on an unemployment or is he you know still working hard with um kids in the back or you know where where is he at because that mindset is going to figure we're going to be able to figure out how to reach drew in a really effective way so there are lots of templates online. I actually, this was a, a downloaded template that um, I used uh, to be able to do that. And all of the different pieces and parts with this can reflect back to your business. So if you are a food business, a restaurant, um, 
a uh, uh, you know a web firm, whatever you are, um, you can change whatever these are these components of that user persona to meet your business needs. One thing I will say, it is important to identify. Um, I call them affections and afflictions, and affections are you know things that are motivators. Um, things that, you know, this is really uh, something that the, the, the user is uh, attracted to, um, how they live their life, and the afflictions are really um, uh, barriers to potentially how they use their product, um, how they spend their money, et cetera. And so getting really nitty gritty about those um, is important. Now, where do you get this information? You can pull it from your social media reports. You can pull it from web analytics. You can pull it from, you know, uh, uh, Excel documents of where you have customer lists. You can talk to your salespeople about who these people are. Um, this doesn't have to be an exact science, especially right now. We're kind of, um, again, uh, just doing kind of a broad stroke approach, but it is really helpful to be able to see uh, who you are marketing to, especially when you're building your brand. If I'm marketing to Drew, uh, I probably am not going to use Comic Sans because um, he's going to just uh, turn his head and never look at me again. All right. He doesn't look like a guy that's going to enjoy Comic Sans. Um, you put my 95 year old grandma up on a user persona, she is all over Comic Sans. Okay. So um, those are those little nuances that we can build in that, um, you know, have fun, have fun with this particular um, part of this project. Okay. So we've got our CBS murder mystery wall um, in front of us. We're looking at, you know, what we look like on LinkedIn, um, what we're posting on our blog, uh, what our billboards look like, what our radio ads sound like, our user persona who we're marketing to, what our brand architecture is. And it's all, you know, cocktail napkins and post-its and it, it doesn't have to be pretty. And then we have to sit back and we have to notice. Okay, so we just have to look at this and we have to start identifying some gaps. What's working well? What's not working well? Where do we have a gap in our brand? Are we not communicating how much we are doing for our community? And um, that is just missing on a communication scale. Is that, you know, is that what's happening? So, you know, that's a gap. We need to fill that gap. We need to make sure that we have a plan for that um, and make sure that that's part of our brand, our brand mission, our, our, brand, um, our, our brand mantra, rather. So, uh, you know, identifying that, noticing that, and then revising as need be. So ask good questions. This is really a cathartic process, especially during this time. Um, and where we have the time to just sit and notice, we don't have to do um, more than uh, is required of us. And uh, we can use that time to just notice what's going on. So with that in mind, we have Brand elements, brand positioning, brand architecture. So once we've you know scribbled out our notes, does our logo need to change? How are we positioning ourselves against our competitor? Where is our brand architecture uh, uh, communicating well, or we have some sort of gap? Where you know what what do we need to fix during that time? So if we are mending our nets, um, we move on to these five. Oh, geez. Oh, come on back here. There we go. Oops. Okay. Uh, these are um, taking, taken from um, uh, the, uh, my favorite textbook here um, about how to market during the recession. And uh, so exploring the upside of increasing investment in marketing. Um, the good news is now you'll be uh, able to get closer to your consumer than every before, ever before. They're listening. Um, they have time on their hands. They're interested. They are looking for variety. They are looking for spice. They are looking for something interesting. Rethinking how you spend your money is also going to be very important. Putting together the most compelling value proposition is also very key. And then fine-tuning your brand and your product offerings. 
All right, so let's explore the first two. Oh, now my arrow key is working. Great. Okay, so um, we've seen some companies um, actually making the investment in some marketing and uh, in attempts to get closer uh, to the consumer. They are reaching out. They are spending money on uh, videos and uh, TV ads and creating other messages to reach the consumer. So I'm going to first highlight um, Jersey Mike's uh, uh, and um, please, I, I like both of these companies. I'm not personally invested in either one of them. Um, so I just use these as an example. So in this particular uh, 30 second ad that we'll watch here, it um, ran on broadcast TV and then as well on the YouTube channel and I think on their website too. Um, we hear from our CEO of uh, Jersey Mike. So let's listen and see what he says. Our Jersey Mike's family is committed to doing everything we can to support our community. I am so proud of our owners throughout the country for serving hospitals, first responders, and those in need. In the true spirit of Jersey Mike's, please seek your opportunities to give and make a difference in someone's life. Our hearts go out to all of you and your families, and we will continue to do everything we can to help us all get through this. Be safe, and God bless. Our Jersey Mike's family is committed. So, thank you, Peter, for sharing that message with us. So, you know, they have obviously made the investment uh, on spending some marketing dollars to communicate with people how this particular sandwich shop is handling um, the COVID-19 crisis. You know, in this commercial, we see two people in the background working. We see an empty um, restaurant and we see, you know, rather typical kind of CEO standing there sharing some facts that some companies uh, and some franchises have been helping out hospitals, etc. All right, so that's what we have seen with that particular ad. So let's look at what Uber did. gives you chills right so they end with this tagline of please don't use our company they're not sharing about the good things that they're doing necessarily um, other than saying stay home so when we think about increasing that investment and meeting our customers where they are I think the uber example that um, we just saw Really, there's, there's no better way to highlight what that example can do. And so, yes, there's comments about how the corporation maybe left some drivers hanging and um, you know, how they handled the situation and right or wrong of how the company um, uh, overall is doing in the perception of um, people, of the customers. But that said, those visuals 
actually showed us not people riding in cars, you know, people with hands across, you know, pa uh, next to panes of glass where they were trying to connect with their loved ones. And so that connection is exactly what the brand of Uber is trying to do. It's trying to connect people together. And so that communication is very important at this time to say, you can't use our product, but we still believe in connection, all right? So that's where that investment can really come in and be that much more important. I think on Jersey Mike, uh, YouTube views, there were 3,000 and um, there were a couple hundred thousand on uh, the YouTube um, uh, channel. So obviously got a few more eyeballs, um, but I think uh, it's because there's some emotion. And when we have emotion, just like looking at that beautiful mountain scene, that is brand. So there's a difference, okay? There's a difference. So that tagline of how they end their actual uh, uh, commercial of don't use our product is fascinating. And I think uh, we're going to see more and more um, companies do that. So, you know, when we, at the end of that commercial, all I wanted to do was go ride in an Uber. I mean, I just wanted, you know, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go see my friends. I wanted to go out for dinner. You know, don't think about an elephant. I just thought of an elephant. Oh, all I want to do is ride an Uber. I can't wait. And there isn't a marketer out there that will tell you, um, you know, that otherwise that you are trying to do that. You are trying to create that momentum and that need with your customer to say, I can't wait to use you. I can't wait to hire you for that job. And that's what we're trying to do um, with our brand building. So, um, how do, uh, let's see, let me go back to my notes here. I got a little out of order, but what else is new? So when we think about how we're going to spend our money, um, you know, uh, how do we spend the little amount that we have left? There we go. So the good news is, as you'll see from lots of different um, commercials and uh, um, you know, video content for sure, uh, the expectations on the beautiful TV studio with excellent lighting and sound has really gone by the wayside once the crisis hit. So you, know, you can do a lot with this. Um, you can do a lot with the computer. Um, and the other good news is there's qualified and talented people out there that have time. And so where we are spending our resources, just like that first slide, that 40 years of evidence says that if we spend money on marketing, if we are building the brand, our brand, we will see those rewards later on, okay? So the other good thing about this is that your customer wants to watch. Your customer is hungry for a variety. And so we have these three, uh, aspects of how we handle our investment, how we handle our money, that um, when the economy was thriving, we didn't necessarily have. The expectation from the customer was that, you know, it was a high quality uh, uh, production, you know, value was very high, um, you know, all of the talented people were busy and our customers were busy as well. Well, now we have kind of broken down all of those um, barrier, barriers to be able to create something pretty wonderful. So um, how can you get your message out on brand, of course, out to your customers? So that means putting together the most compelling value proposition. Actually saying, this is how you can use us, this is what we offer, and honing it down. It's knowing our why, it's making sure that our brand position is in line with other, uh, with, with who we believe we are against our competition. Um, and so making sure that that uh, is, is clearly identified. So that value proposition. How can you engage with your customer now versus later? Okay, so going back to that user persona, thinking about empathizing with our customer about where they are 
uh, and really making sure that we can engage with them in an interesting way. So how can we change uh, your communication or tone of the message? You know, Uber wouldn't necessarily have that uh, kind of communication in any other time frame other than now. And then most importantly, what does your customer want to hear? Are we, you know, sitting there being talked to by the CEO um, with a lovely Navy sports coat on that's um, trying to say that some of his franchises, uh, you know, shared um, meals with hospital workers would have been so much more impactful to actually see that. So what does your customer want to hear? What does your customer want to see? What do they need um, to see? at this particular point in time. And then going through that user persona and having that to go back to, to really personify whoever that is, is really, really important. So product offerings. When we think about what we have and we see kind of the trend of, of the big dogs of, you know, uh, Sling giving, you know, two, um, two weeks of, of free streaming, HBO Now, uh, Beachbody giving two weeks free um, membership, um, uh, Peloton, which is that um, fancy bike riding um, uh, app and bike, you know, giving away free content. So they know that you have that you as the customer have time and energy. You don't have a lot of funds. But um, our economy will come back. We, we um, have seen that from, uh, from the past. And so what could we give away for free right now? What service can we offer to make sure that we're meeting our customer right where we are and communicating our value? And whether that's a webinar or whether that's um, uh, you know, a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, with a potential customer, hey, we know that you're not gonna use us right now, but let us share some of our insight. Let's share you know, some of the things that we can do. All right, so um, then we think about uh, 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 Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And what I like about Maslow's hierarchy of needs is it really focused on a more positive account of human behavior than focused on what goes right. So he was really interested in human potential and how we fulfill that human potential. So we are at the bottom of this pyramid right now where we are, you know, thinking about our food, water, security, um, you know, uh, our jobs, et cetera. So we need to make sure that we meet our customers where they're at and uh, communicate effectively, knowing that not very many people are in the self-actualization kind of point of view right now. Um, and so we can't necessarily meet them there. We have to meet them at that bottom of that Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Giving away my um, secrets here. Sorry about that. Don't know what is going on here. Okay, there we go. So there's good news. News flash, even though this was a publication from 2014. As I was doing a, a bit of research for this uh, presentation, I came across uh, this article um, by Saim Kashmiri and Vijay uh, Mahajan. So it's Beating the Recession Blues, Exploring the Link Between Family Ownership, Strategic Marketing Behavior, and Firm Performance During Recessions. All right, so this is a beefy article. It's 76 pages, I think. Let me just pull some of the highlights because maybe you're like me uh, where we just want the highlights right now. So um, this study explores whether family firms exhibit unique marketing behavior and whether their unique marketing behavior helps outperform non-family firms during periods of economic contraction. So basically the article goes on for pages and pages and pages that talks about how family businesses, how small businesses, and specifically family-owned businesses, are really set up for success in times of crisis. 
and I didn't get a chance to actually solidify this fact, um, but I read that most of the big companies were actually born out of the Great Depression. Uh, Little Debbie um, was born out of a couple making whoopie pies and selling them out of their, um, out of their car uh, during the Depression, and that's how Little Debbie. So a lot of the food industries actually were started during the, uh, uh, the Depression and actually are some of the biggest and largest corporations today. So there's a lot of hope in this, and I hope you uh, hear that. Um, but what this article really reflects on is that increasing um, uh, marketing activity rather than decreasing are it said, uh, said to be more successful than those. So during recessions, we remove that clutter, we remove the noise uh, that many of us uh, have in our daily life. And so that means the message is going to be heard that much more. Um, so brand equity is dependent on keeping up consistent and sustained levels and high levels of advertising. So if you are looking at your budget and thinking about cutting your budget, your marketing budget at all, now is not the time. It's time to make that investment and the right investment uh, to be successful. The other uh, component that this article highlights is how to increase new products at this time. And so, um, you know, typically companies kind of pull back and say, we're not going to release anything to the market. Uh, actually, um, it is uh, easy to differentiate that market compared to others at this time um, because, and then, you know, customers are ready for that product once the recession is over um, to be able to actually actually convert to a sale. So um, new products are, ex uh, are a key piece of lasting through this uh, time period. The other piece of this article that talks about um, uh, you know, family businesses and small businesses uh, typically have more community involvement, have more positive social interactions, are doing more things for their, communi for their communities. And so why not uh, taking that time to communicate what those good things are to again, kind of build up that, that brand equity. So I was really um, uh, quite struck by uh, the, all of the research that says that family businesses are set up for success because they're thinking about um, you know, protecting their family's reputation and thus protecting their firm's reputation. So um, a lot of, of um, good aspects to think about if you're feeling a little hopeless um, during this time of crisis. Uh, so here's um, uh, some key points here. So we expect firms that are proactive in new product introduction uh, during economic downturns outperform their competitors for multiple reasons. Um, and so, you know, uh, the, the firms that launch products proactively during recessions, they can attract those really talented people, uh, especially in engineering and marketing, um, to improve the quality of their products. That means they're releasing something that much better. So it doesn't mean that you go and start a widget factory if you are, you know, accounting firm, but what could you create? Um, what, what other product, what other service could you create during this time? Um, and again, with a family business, this article also highlights family executives are less likely to be driven by short-term myopic goals and have the long-term interests of the family future. So they're th already thinking that way to make sure that the, uh, uh, the family is successful overall. So hopefully that brings a little bit of uh, hope um, as you are all facing really difficult decisions and uh, time periods, um, but hopefully I have been able to share um, some insight. So uh, let's see, we're at 344 here. Uh, if anybody is brave enough or would like some insight, uh, I thought it would be fun uh, and hopefully helpful um, to brainstorm a little bit. What's the biggest problem we could solve from a brand and marketing perspective? Uh, does anybody have anything um, where they've just been waiting to raise their hand uh, and share? 
I would be happy to brainstorm. We've got a lot of smart people on this call too. So um, perhaps we're able to come up with a really uh, interesting, um, interesting idea and interesting uh, proposal to fix a problem. So I um, wanted to open it up to anybody if, uh, if, if we are so brave. And uh, you should be able to unmute yourself um, if you would like to. Otherwise, I think there's a little raise hand option and I can um, handle those controls for you. My students do the oh, Go ahead. No, go ahead. You go ahead. Um, I was just going to say my students are um, do the same thing. Like Emily, I can't believe you're going to make us talk. We just wanted to listen. So, I I feel for all of you. I just I I wanted to open it up in case anybody felt comfortable sharing, or um, if we you know after hearing this insight, if you had any um, uh, big problems that we could solve together. Um, if not, we can move on. I've still got some other things to share, but you know, Emily, there's one thing that I've um, been seeing a lot of, and I know. Previously um, on this topic, but um, a lot of companies just haven't really had this type of, you know, crisis communication plan, crisis marketing plan in place. And um, I know we're struggling to find a balance between, especially on social media and the channels that you're talking to your customers more regularly. Um, is there a good balance between, you know, your brand messages and COVID related messages and and I'm sure it depends on the business uh, and the industry, but do you have any, is there any sort of a rule of thumb that people can, can use there? You know, I think it comes down to tone. I think, um, you know, the, the, the numbers of messages, the amount of communication we do is really industry specific. And it's also kind of business specific, you know, um, if you're suddenly posting every day about a particular product or service, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe now's not the time to necessarily double down on that. But if you're sharing that message in a really unique way, um, like the Uber example, that's all about tone. Um, versus our poor Jersey Mike's guy that we're just dragging through the mud here on this call, um, who did a fine job. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it is about tone. And so uh, making sure that you're meeting your customer where they are is, is really important. So um, I would say it comes down to that. And what's great is that there are a lot of content strategists and writers out there that can do that work for you, can work from home, can uh, supply you with that content. So that goes back to that investment of what you want to do uh, during this time period to utilize those resources. And it's, it's pretty cost effective to do so. Um, so I think it comes down into tone and making sure that your content is written well. Excellent. Okay. Any other questions or we'll move on here. Okay. All right. So our three takeaways. Um, hopefully I've, I've shared some insight on uh, how to build your brand during this time period, but uh, brand is important and it's necessary work for brands to be successful and businesses to be successful. Brand is that art and it's a science, all right? And we need both to be able to, both skill sets to be able to be successful. And communicating your brand starts at that top of that organizational chart. So, you know, if you don't have buy-in from your leadership, um, send the link that Jen will post after this lecture is done. And hopefully that is encouraging to leaders. Um, and we've got academic research backing us up that it is important to make that investment, whatever that is, uh, to take that time to uh, really hone in on who your brand is and, and, and why your brand is. Um, and so uh, these are the three takeaways that I hope that you gathered uh, from our time uh, today. You know, again, I'm not 
uh, here to say, you know, this is this is going to make you millions tomorrow. Um, that's a that's a, a different lecture, uh, I think overall. But I'm hopefully offering a solution um, that for those of you that have figured out how to kind of stop the bleeding uh, and want to gain some momentum and have some energy and clarity uh, now that we have all just sort of stopped. Uh, but I I really do. Um, like this, uh, this thought of mending nets uh, to make sure that those customers, we don't miss any customers once, once the, the markets are, are open again and people are, are ready to um, be more engaged wherever they are. So that is it. Hopefully you have had an aha or two, maybe four. I'd be happy with one. Um, and then the question uh, really comes into, you know, what will you do different tomorrow? So what will you change? Um, what will you hopefully uh, take part in? Um, what project will you start? Uh, hopefully that has given you some inspiration and encouragement to take that step. Ask more questions. How can I help anybody? Uh, if, if anybody, I'd, I'd be happy to take questions now. Um, I'm available uh, as well uh, after we conclude today. Uh, you can find me at emily.quinn at usd.edu. I love conversation. I'm hungry for intellectual conversation and communication. So um, please reach out if I can be more helpful. But now we'll take a pause. And if there's any specific questions, I would be happy to answer. Emily, one, um, I know a lot of marketers um, are pretty good at working remote and, and doing things um, remotely, but a lot of businesses, and especially um, small businesses, have not um, been in this realm before. So with some of the brand work that you were talking about, um, the brainstorming and um, really reflecting on the brand and starting to establish some of those key messages, do you have any recommendations on how to do this with the team remotely? Hmm. Well, uh, in some ways, I think it um, is better uh, because you are uh, given that pause to think, given that time to kind of compile, uh, rather than you know having Tuesday at three o'clock we're going to talk about the brand. You know, meet me in this conference room with some soggy croissants and lukewarm coffee. You know, we, we have that, had that time to kind of pause and think. And uh, so we can bring in more of kind of the art of, of what brand is. Uh, lots of different collaboration tools out there, lots of different templates. You know, we can see those visuals and how the customer is consuming our information right now is all through screens anyway. So, uh, you know, getting, um, getting that information compiled uh, is, um, is you know done in the electronic way anyway so you know our, our google slides and our google docs are are helpful in that way there are you know other kind of collaboration software uh tools out there you know kind of more whiteboard spaces that you can utilize as well um that are sometimes you know helpful in that regard but you know having that time and um pause i think actually uh, could help businesses that much more to be able to do that. Uh, the good news is if when you are ready to make that investment and perhaps um, hiring those resources is going to be part of that investment if your business is willing to take that step, marketers work remote all the time. And so working in that manner and communicating back uh, and pitching businesses is not unfamiliar uh, and uh, done all the time. And so uh, if you do hire resources, they're ready to go in that capacity, uh, even if your team is a little bit more hesitant. Excellent. And I know there was a comment in the chat um, that mentioned a few things, but especially um, the idea of measuring successful and unsuccessful social media posts at this time. Um, I know I personally and the marketers across USD's campus have seen uh, a definite uptick in social media posts, and that is happening globally. I think Facebook is has seen more traffic um, than maybe ever before, definitely more than they have been in, in several years over the last month or so. So 
this is also just a good time to be um, reaching your customers in that way, I think, because we are all using social media to make those connections um, more so than, um, than we have before. Yeah. Um, measuring those, um, you know, that's where in the brand audit, you know, put your most successful post and put your most unsuccessful post and, you know, look at the visuals, look at what people are actually gravitating towards. Um, this is a great time to do, you know, A-B testing and uh, figure out, you know, what, what, what visuals, what content really attract the right kind of customer um, to be able to do that. So I, I don't think you should shy away from, uh, from anything at this point. I think it's a really actually open space um, for us to try things because we do have a consumer who's uh, interested. Now, you know, making sure that it's on brand for the most part um, before you start this work is also important too. Excellent. Well, we've got a couple more minutes. If anyone else wants to um, hop on the line and ask any questions or comments or um, pick Emily's brain on a project you've been struggling with, feel free to do so. Emily, this is Addie. Hi, Hi. Thank you so much for your presentation. It was awesome. And I want to say thank you to that first and foremost, because our oh. team was in the process of our rebrand um, at the end of February, beginning of March. Okay. And so part of us thought, gosh, we need to pause and push pause on things right now, not unroll our new vision statement, new branding, new all those pieces. And we just said, we're doing it and we did it and it has been so successful. We've had some of our posts being shared to event companies all over the world. And we've been doing kind of a mix of the COVID piece as well as just us um, and our own vision statements. So we've been having a really good mix lately, but it was something that we decided to just do. And I'm glad we did because uh, instead of just sitting back and letting life just kind of take us, we've just been able to focus on some of those efforts and it's truly been remarkable. That is great. Well, thank you for sharing that, Addie. I think you know, one of the things I didn't mention, which you did, is just employee engagement. I mean, we all need that thing to hold on to. You know, I, I can't wait till I get my beach body 30 minute workout in every day uh, and the kids watch YouTube, you know, <laughs> so we need something to hold on yeah. to. So we do daily huddles on our team at 9 a.m. and then 3 p.m. and every the start of every week we talk through branding and what the rollout is this week each i've got two different individuals on our team that kind of take that ownership piece so they're writing all the content pulling all the imagery and then our designer kind of designs all of those pieces so it's a super hands-on approach but it was it was not my decision um, as the leader of the company to say we're doing it um, I actually was the one that was a little hesitant and not to do it, but our team members were like, just do it. Let's do it. And honestly, it was, we are so excited to share it as well. I mean, it's a whole new vision statement for our team. So we've integrated not only that vision statement in there, but also just recognizing the times and the changes that we are all in these days. So it was a good mix of both, but. Good. I'm so glad that was uplifting for you. Yeah. Awesome. But we'll have to check out the event company now. Thank you for the plug. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Good. Well, um, any other other items? If you know this, sometimes this takes a little bit of time to absorb and think about. Like I said, I'm always available. I'm hungry for conversation. So even if it's just a quick uh, hello email or um, uh, reaching out on a question, I've I've got a lot of um, connections and resources both in the academic and industry world. So. I'm happy to be helpful. I mean, that's what this time period is all about, is about helping each other. So um, let me know how I can help you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Emily. That was wonderful. Um, and oh, sorry, Heather, did you want to jump on? I was just going to say thanks. Hi, Heather. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you. What a you surprise. Great job. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's so fun to see friendly faces. I had no idea. It's mm -hmm. fun. Great. Nice to see you, Heather. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, yeah, as I mentioned at the beginning, I will send an email out once we've got this recording up on uh, YouTube. So if there's anything you want to circle back on um, or if there's somebody
that you think might benefit from the content in today's webinar and you want to share it on with them, that would be fantastic. Um, and, and just a reminder, we've got several more of these webinars coming up. On Thursday, um, our, uh, one of our faculty members, Tom Martin, will be talking about supply chain and inventory risk. And if you're a marketer, that might not be your cup of tea, but there's probably someone that you're working with that that is. So please feel free to share the link with them. Um, and then we've got a number of other great uh, webinars coming up in the following week. So thank you again. Reach out if there's anything you need, and we'll make sure to include Emily's contact information in that follow-up email as well. Thank you again, Emily. Appreciate thank your you. time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.